once you cross 40, the risk of getting asthma is there. Previously, people used to use transmit acid for, for heavy menses. Uh. Then mm. later on, they realized that one of the side effects of this uh, transmit acid actually, uh, uh, you, you get fairer. Laser device that, which is a one shot but double wavelength. Correct. Laser device which yeah. enables um, resurfacing mm. plus collagen remodeling at the deeper layers. Mm. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Peter, consultant dermatologist. Uh, we are here again with another episode of our podcast. So today we'll be talking about hyperpigmentation. You know, it's a very common problem that, that we see uh, in our day in day out practice. Uh, so Dr. Chai, what is the most common uh, hyperpigmentation problem that you see in patients? So the most common hyperpigmentation problem that I see in my daily uh, in my daily practice will be melasma. But this uh, this is a condition where there's um, ill defined ill defined dark brown patches that occurs roughly symmetric on the photo exposed area. For example, forehead, the nose bridge, on your cheeks, above the upper lips. And this common um, this commonly affect age group of, of forty and above. Yeah, so we, we call it like this. Sometimes they tell my patient it's a central facial, right? That means it's more on the central, and it's at the areas where it's protruding out. Because UV sun is always on top, right? So anything that protrudes out will have more sun damage. And therefore, these are the areas where you get melasma, like your forehead, your upper cheek, your nasal bridge, you know, your upper lips. But you don't see it at the lower lips. You, know? you don't see it below your chin, right? Um, what about Dr. Lu? What other hyperpigmentation problems that, that you see? The one that I mm. see quite common is actually freckles and lentigens. Mm. So actually, both of them are about the same, but um, freckles is smaller, mm. less than 2 mm, and then lentigens is more than that. Usually, they are at the top layer of the uh, skin is uh, we call it epidermal. So uh, the treatment uh, very different from melasma because melasma usually is quite deep inside. The freckles and also lentigens is quite superficial. Mm, yeah. So when, whenever we see hyperpigmentation problem, we also want to know that uh, whether it's at the epidermis, which is the surface, the superficial layer of the skin, or whether it's a deeper part of the skin, because that will help to help us to differentiate what is the diagnosis of the problem. You know, for example, another common uh, pigmentation problem that we see would be a post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or short form PIH. Post means after, inflammatory means inflamed, it gets red, it gets itchy. Hyperpigmentation of course means just darkening of the skin. So uh, PIH can be due to a lot of problems. Sometimes, you know, some patients, we, we, we receive quite a lot of complications from, from other places, right? You know, all this Bosch job that, that cause complications, then they come to me. Uh, and one of the reasons is if for example, lasers, we talk about lasers, but if you don't know how to use well a lasers, you can also cause complications. And PIH is one of the complications of, of lasers. Um, so from the history, we, need, we can identify, we can diagnose PIH because obviously something happened and then the skin turns darker in colour. Some other common causes mm. for hy post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation would be after the skin um, recovers from inflammation or injuries such as eczema, psoriasis, acne, or those um, wounds or chemical mm. burns as well. There is another group of uh, hyperpigmentation uh, uh, disorder where the pigmentation happens at the dermis, the middle layer of the skin, uh, like our birthmarks. We have uh, nevus of Ota, uh, this, which is one, one kind of hyperpigmentation problem. How do we differentiate between nevus of Ota to freckles to lentigens to melasma? It's actually the colour, because we can see that it's a bit bluish, greenish colour. Uh, and of course, we have our dermatoscope. Using our dermatoscope, we can look at uh, the pigmentation, whether it's deep, whether it's uh, superficial. So just now, uh, Dr. Chai, you mentioned about melasma, right? That the causes of, of melasma, one of it is ageing. Right? We know for Asian uh, ladies especially, I always say the magic number is 40, right? Once you cross 40, the risk of getting melasma is there. Right? And uh, whereas for freckles, lentigens, um, the, the one, number one cause is UV. Uh, that's why, you know, for Caucasians, during summer, the freckles get worse. But during winter, the freckles get better also. Uh, so this is one of the causes. Um, other causes, hormones, uh, especially those patients who take hormonal pills, oral contraceptive pills, they are at increased risk. Genetic. No, but funny thing is when we always say genetic, right? Patients always tell you that, oh, my mom doesn't have melasma. But I always say, you know, our time is different. Uh, maybe our parents' time, they are more indoor. In our time, maybe we are more outdoor. Maybe have more trees those days than now. And also, uh, uh, maybe the, the... What is that? The ozone layer. <laughs> I always oh. say ozone. <laughs> yeah. oh. Ozone layer thinner Thin. nowadays. Uh, so all this... Uh, part of the, the reason why we may be more exposed, uh, we may have high risk of getting all this hyperpigmentation problem compared to our uh, 
mothers or parents. Skin brightening uh, ingredients such as kaji acid, abudin, stearmin, uh, transamin acid, um, that's, they can intercept the melanogenesis in its own unique way um, to lighten pigmentations. So um, there are many formulations out there made of different ingredients. So um, you may need monitoring if you're using those more concentrated ingredients because it can potentially lead to dryness, flaking or redness to skin. Mm. Some also they use hydroquinone uh, as an approved 2-4% to 4 uh, hydroquinone for, for, for pigmentation as well. And don't forget the sunblock. Yeah, and, and you stop, if you stop all these um, formulations, then... It might get rebound. Yes, yeah, because the uh, melanin activity resume. Mm. Yeah. And also topical retinoids as well. Right? Topical retinoids is something that we can use for acne, we can use for pigmentation, for anti-aging. Another very important ingredient. You know, I always tell my patient uh, for uh, melasma, right? It's, the way I treat melasma is like how I treat diabetes, how I treat hypertension. First of all, it's a chronic problem, right? It's not like once I reduce down your pigmentation, it's not going to come back again. No, it will come back again. So it's a chronic problem that we need to control it. Uh, it may come and go. Sometimes, uh, a lot of our patients, right, after their summer holidays, they will come back to us, right? And they will say, oh, my pigmentation comes back. Then we have to restart back the treatment again. And also, uh, just like hypertension and diabetes, there's no one single treatment that fits everyone. Uh, most of the time, we will need combination treatment, especially for melasma. We know it's one of the most difficult um, hyperpigmentation problems that we treat, you know. So we always combine things. Uh, and maybe you combine this with this, it works better compared to combining this with the other, the other treatment. Yeah. And oral treatment is also very important, right? Uh, Dr. Yeah, yeah. One of the treatments that uh, patients see very good results is actually oral transmit acid. Mm. Um, previously, people used to use transmit acid for, for heavy menses. Uh. Then mm. later on, they realised that one of the side effects of this uh, transmit acid actually, uh, uh, you, you get fairer, mm. including your pigmentation. So nowadays, people use it for, for melasma as well. It works quite well. Yeah. Yeah, I so think it works, um, it reduces the pigmentation by reducing, preventing the melanocyte formation and also reduce the angiogenesis, which is the formation of the new blood vessels. So I usually recommend my patients to take uh, 250 mg twice a day and you need at least three months to see the results. And it can be taken up to six months. Um, those patients with history or uh, history of palmar, of thromboembolic disease such as pulmonary embolism of the lung or those deep vein thrombosis are not advised to take these medications. So the downside of the medication is we can't take very very long. So normally um, we, we have to start some kind of treatment um, along the way so that we can replace the, the, that treatment. Even some of the oral supplement, the whitening supplement like uh, antioxidants, uh, antioxidant, all these can help. Yeah, antioxidants, ingredients of uh, uh, this, sorry, uh, l cysteine and l glutathione they are potent antioxidants which can help to reduce the harmful effects of the UV ray as well. Mm. Yeah, in terms of uh, lasers, you know, some patients, uh, once they have pigmentation, they come to us, then they say, I want lasers. You know? uh, but I always say, uh, no, lasers, they are not magic, right? And especially in terms of melasma, for freckles and lentigen, it's not a problem. And normally, one or two sessions of lasers, yeah, we can we can help to lighten it. You know? But for melasma, because of uh, actually it's a very complex disease for melasma. Until now, we still don't know the whole pathogenesis uh, of the disease. You know, we know a little bit, like you mentioned just now, about the angiogenesis, about the the melanocytes, about the melanin productions, all these things, but not the complete picture. So that's why it becomes still a very difficult uh, disease to treat. Um, so in terms of lasers. I always say, you know, you want to go mild. You don't want something that after doing the procedures, the skin turns red or you have some scabs. You can have a really rebound. You know, we get patients you know, after doing lasers outside, you know, they come to us with all these complications. Yeah. So um, in terms of lasers, you want to slowly clear the pigment. But at the same time, you also want to stimulate collagen as well. Because collagen, the colors, is a fair color. It helps to lighten and also the, the idea is to create new skin, new cells there, so that this pigmentation doesn't recur that fast. Right? Uh, so one of the devices that we use is actually uh, Multifrax. It's a combination of a 1550 nanometer and 1927 nanometer. How we actually uh, identify lasers. You know, patients come with different names and everything. I tell them, look at the wavelength. Right? So in this case, the 1927 nanometer actually targets the surface pigment, but the 1550 targets the deeper the dermis layer. So by targeting the middle layer, you actually stimulate new collagen synthesis as well. So you don't only clear the pigment, but you also create new cells, right? New, new skin, basically. 
Yeah. yeah so each shot is a um, laser device that, which is a one shot but double wavelength Correct. laser device, which yep. enables um, resurfacing mm. plus collagen remodeling at the deeper layers. Mm. Yeah. As uh, Dr. Chai mentioned about the angiogenesis, right? I think there's another laser that we can use to treat uh, melasma as well. Mm. We also have to, uh, which we call it copper bromide laser, mm. that also help to reduce the, uh, uh, this is the angiogenesis as well. Mm. Yeah. So there's another treatment of choice yeah. for melasma. Yeah. And I always tell patients, you know, those with very red face, a lot of small little vessels, you know, these are the high risk group of patients that most likely will have pigmentation later in life. You know. Let's say if melasma, how do we, what, what is the best treatment for a patient? You know, I think number one is the skin type of the patient. If obviously a darker skin patient, we always have to be careful because the risk of pigmentation, PIH, is higher in darker skin group of patients. And if a patient comes in with a lot of small little vessels, then we will go more towards that uh, vascular. vascular lasers to reduce down the angiogenesis, you know, the vascular endothelial growth factors for this. Now, the, the, again, the oral medication is not for everyone. You know? the, some patients, they really don't like to take medicine. Uh, but I would say sunscreen is a must. Right? Uh, but some patients, you know, they come, they, their hobby is to play tennis all day, you know, golf. I think these are the two, the diving. Uh, the, these, these are the hobbies that um, the, the pigmentation tend to reoccur back again you know, because of constant UV exposure again. Yeah. Some patients might not be suitable to use a uh, lightening cream as well due to sensitive skin. Mm. So uh, that also uh, one of the factors for choosing the treatment. Yeah, yeah. Especially the, the, the sensitive skin, you, you put a bit of retinol, it's going to be even more sensitive, drier. Never dry your skin, you know, because when the skin is dry, there will be more pigmentation that comes in. So hydration is very important also. To sum it up, right, uh, hyperpigmentation problem uh, is a common problem and getting the correct diagnosis is very important because it will change our management completely. You know, it's not like pigmentation equals laser. No, definitely no. PIH, what do we do? We, we don't need to do anything. We just rest and the pigmentation will get better with time, right? Uh, so getting the right diagnosis is very important. Huh? So for anyone out there with hyperpigmentation problem, please seek professional opinion, get the right diagnosis and get the right treatment for it. If it's melasma, as I mentioned just now, it's a chronic problem. So you know that it's not a one-off treatment. Uh, you need maintenance treatment uh, and avoid UV. Thank you.